Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. So excited to be here today and introduce you to Kimberly Lawson. Kimberly is an international best-selling author, business coach, podcast host, and speaker. She has a vision to make this world a more positive place than when she first entered it. Armed with a background in psychology and education, coupled with an unwavering entrepreneurial spirit, and a passion for helping budding and novice entrepreneurs thrive, Kimberly's company, Lawson Learning Academy, specializes in helping individuals turn their dreams of entrepreneurship into thriving, successful businesses. Kimberly has successfully coached many individuals to achieve their business goals. An accomplished author, what started as penning short stories and poetry as a child, ultimately turned into authoring and co-authoring several books and launching her own publishing company, Sherelle Inc. Now, Kimberly, did I say Sherelle correctly? Sherelle Inc. correctly? Yes. Named after the, the singer Sherelle. <laughs> okay. That's good. Well, welcome to Dear to Leap podcast, Kimberly. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. And I have to tell you, every time someone reads my bio, I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, this person sounds impressive. Who is that? (laughs) Isn't that funny? Because as we were talking before we came on the podcast, I was like, I'm really impressed with you. We're going to have an awesome time. You've got a lot of wisdom to share. And you were like, I do. And I'm like, yeah, I read your bio. I read your website. I read everything. You're amazing. Yeah. So, um, I know you're humble too. That's good. You know, because for me, it's just really and truly about making a positive impact. You know, that that's, that's what it is because when I'm no longer on top of the soil, I really, I want people to miss me and to have genuinely nice things to say about me. So that's really where it is. When I hear all of the other things and when people are like, you know, that's pretty impressive. I'm like, it is? (laughs) Well, you have a beautiful smile and I just love your hair. And I already told you, I love your necklace. So if anybody's listening to this in audio only and you want to go check out Kimberly, you can go to the YouTube channel because we have this posted there too. Um, And it'd be worth going to because Kimberly has a beautiful smile. Uh, And I'm just wanting to steal, I'm wanting to steal your hair because that's what I want mine to look like, but uh, I got it up in a bun because it does not look like that. (laughs) The the curls, you know, I don't know. I love the, the curly hair. That's, it's just more me. You know, I wore a bun for a while, but the curly hair, that's just like, that's curly hair is my spirit animal. Big curly hair. Well, and it looks amazing on you. It, 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 so it makes you glow. You, you, you actually have a glow on your face. So that's awesome. And we also discovered, um, because she had to go tell her kids to not, <laughs> not come down and ask for a juice box or anything while she was on the podcast. We also discovered that her oldest, our, your oldest son is the same age as my youngest grandson, right? Nine. Yes. Yes. My oldest yeah. son. Yeah, son seven, so definitely, yes. And it's it's a great age. Like, I don't know how your grandson is, but mine is still sort of in that kid phase. He doesn't, he's not trying to be a teenager. You know, he likes electronics and things, but he still plays with stuffed animals. He still plays with action figures. So I'm just absorbing all of that because I know that very soon it will all be about a cell phone and staying in the room. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, my grandson's the same way. No cell phone yet or anything like that. In fact, my husband and I just asked him this week, do you have our phone number written down somewhere in case you need anything? Um, Because our other grandkids, they call us all the time for advice or, you know, "Um, I need blah, blah, blah. And 
I don't know how to get it. And of course, we're like, okay, you got it. We'll be sending that to you. <laughs> so the youngest one doesn't even know yet what all he's going to, what he's going to be getting from us once he can call us and tell us what he needs. <laughs> so, well, Kimberly, tell me about you and your business. So, I mean, honestly, my business, Lost and Learning Academy, it really came out of tragedy. You know, um, in 2018, I my entire family, I say it's my loss, but it was our entire family. Um, we had the death of my cousin who was more like my twin. We used to always joke that we were twins because we were the same age. We were next door neighbors. We were classmates, had the same first job, same first car. His dad wow. is the oldest. My mom is the youngest and they were best friends. So it was just, oh. it was, it was devastating. And I had to find something out of that humongous like loss to mm -hmm. really now find a purpose to carry on because it was very difficult. My family is very small on my mom's side that I'm close to. And so any absence is noticeable. You know, this is not a crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a family reunion. It wasn't hundreds of people there. Like everyone that showed up, it was I think 30 of us total. That's like all the kids, everything. So he was an entrepreneur and we used to talk about that all the time. And, you know, he was very much about business and we would just talk about things. And after he died, I reflected on a lot of the conversations that we had. And I realized that I had been running a business, just didn't have it organized. I helped other people organize uh, their business. Like I literally uh, helped someone make a um, million dollars and wow. I had not organized my company. Like what kind of, you know, what kind of foolishness is that? I'm helping people make money and I don't have myself organized. And so after he died, I spent that year reflecting on all the conversations we had and over the course of our years, I mean, it had literally been, you know, probably a million conversations. And I realized that he was trying to teach me how to really come into my own as an entrepreneur. Like you don't have to just be that person that people come to like, oh, let me pick your brain. Oh, let's have coffee, let's have lunch. You know, that type of thing. Like if they're coming, it's because you have something they need and it's valuable. So you have to value yourself. And so from that, once I, it was probably within a week of the anniversary of his death to the establishment of my, my company, it wasn't even 30 days. Like it was like once I understood the message, it was full steam ahead and Lost and Learning Academy was launched and I had my first couple of clients and I haven't looked back. I love it. It's been wonderful. It's been great. But I'm really loving the fact that I'm feeling connected to people and their families. So that, I mean, that's why I tell people, it's like, you know, heartbreak, it, it, it's difficult. But when you, whatever the message is that you pull out of that, you're so much stronger. And that's how I feel. Oh, now it totally makes sense why you're so passionate about helping others and why you talk about, um, you know, caring about what people think of you when you're under the soil that because when you talked about that, I felt your emotion. And now I see why that that emotion runs so deep. What was your cousin's name? So his name was Nicholas Gerard Rogers. And he was an entertainer. He had started his own entertainment company mm. and he was a DJ. And literally he was just getting his stride. He, um, he was on a couple of reality TV shows, um, DJ, and he had, he, he had a residency at um, Bloomingdale's here in Atlanta. He had um, a weekly um, residency with Metro PCS. I mean, he was really starting to take you know his stride like really come into it and he on a monday he took a nap and he never woke up oh my gosh wow oh yeah that is that is tragic well yeah. you have you have really um you really have a tribute 
to Nicholas that I, you know he's hearing you, you know he's watching you, and he's applauding you. I, I and you know, and that keeps me going. It's because I know that I'll have moments that I'm like, okay, am I really? making a difference am i really doing what i'm supposed to do and it's like i can just kind of feel and i can just kind of not and i and i really give him so much credit for things because it was his push if he had stayed you know if he was still alive i don't know that i would have had that push to do this mm -hmm. myself because then i realized okay i need to carry his legacy on because he um it what made it hard was this was nine days after his 37th birthday. This was four mm. days after he found out his wife was um, going to have a girl. You know, oh my gosh! Oh it was my less gosh! Than four years since his dad had passed. So it, I really then because everybody put us together, like because we were always together, and so people. Mm -hmm always ask that, you know, we go to the class reunion, I show up first, well, they ask him, where's Gerard, where's Gerard? You know, I go home, where's Gerard? You know, everybody was always looking. So now I feel like, you know, I need to carry it on. I want his kids to see it. I want my kids to see it. You know, I want to share those things that I learned from him with the world to make it better. And you're leaving a real legacy for his children and your children. And of course, helping all these other people that are clients of yours do the same thing. And that's what, and that's the conversation that I have. Anyone that comes to me first and says they want to start a business, I want to work for myself. I ask why, because that's important to me. I don't want you to say, oh, because I want to be a millionaire. Oh, I want to buy this. No, I want you to tell me that you want your kids to grow up seeing their mom do something amazing. I want you to tell me that if you have to get up out of bed every morning and do work to earn a living for your family, you want to feel good about what you're doing. I want you to tell me that you want to leave something for your kids. And so, the why is always so important to me because that's my why. Like, that's why I'm getting out of bed. That is why I'm mm -hmm. here wanting to help you. So I need mm -hmm. you to, I need to make sure that the focus is in the right place because it's about legacy. You know, it's about mm -hmm. carrying on that legacy, building that legacy, you know, give, give something to the universe that's going to be here when you're not. And do you find it makes a, a big difference in how successful they can become when yes. they do have that big why? Yes. And this is the thing. And you can you can tell me if I'm missing the mark on this, but I really believe this. <laughs> People don't want you to sell them anything. They want you to share something with them. We've all went to a store or somewhere and we felt pressured to buy. We felt strong armed into it. And we have that regret. We just like, oh, you know, yeah. you kind of feel icky. It's like, uh, and yes. that's usually the things that we take back, you know, to the store or we don't go to that store anymore. But when a person mm -hmm. shares something with you that made a real mm -hmm. difference in their life, they're sharing that experience, you don't feel bad about spending your money because they shared an experience with you. They didn't sell you. Right. Oh, no, Kimberly, I would never say that's wrong. That is exactly how I feel too. And the world has gone uh, crazy enough as it is. They don't need any negativity in their life with somebody pressure selling them. Right. You know, and, and that's the thing about it. And so people, when you start a business, you want to, you like, oh, I want to need to get all these clients. I need all these customers. I want everybody to buy. And, you know, I know people who have started a business and they literally pressure everyone in their family to buy something, all their friends mm -hmm. to buy. Okay. Yep. So that's great for the first month. You had a great month, <laughs> you had all of these sales. Now, <laughs> two months later, who's buying because yes, the money is yes. in the repeat customers and you can That's tell right. that by whether or not you shared something with them 
or if you were mm-hmm. selling them and your why, mm-hmm. you can't fake it. I have literally mm-hmm. sold some of everything that you, I sold vacuum cleaners. I, I used to sell Kirby vacuum cleaners. I sold oh, wow. Twitter, I sold Avon. I have sold Scentsy. I have done so many things. The ones that I did the best with were the things that I use myself because when a customer yes. asked me, what's my favorite? I'm able to tell them when you go to a restaurant that you've never been to. I ask the waiter all the time or the waitress, what's your favorite? I do too. And when they say, I don't know, I'm thinking this restaurant is terrible. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Their because food if, isn't if any good. Staff, if the staff is not eating, that's an issue. <laughs> but when I ask, what's your favorite? You say, oh my God, the risotto. Oh my God. You know, yes. the roasted Brussels sprouts, they're so good. Right. Like, I'm like, okay. See, now yeah, you're talking exactly. because now you are sharing with me what you love rather than just mm-hmm. telling me what today's specials are, trying to sell that to me. I, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I don't want that. Oh, I love that. And that's always been the principle. Even when I worked at McDonald's and they, I remember one night when I worked, the manager came to me and she said, we have all of these plates. It was Disney plates that had different little scenes for movies. We have all these plates in the bag. Can you sell these plates for us? Sure can. Why? Because as soon as <laughs> people came to the window, I didn't, I didn't sell it to the parents. I shared that experience with the kids. So if there was a kid in the car, I would hand the kid the plate. Look at this. <laughs> Look, it's the little mermaid. Ariel is my favorite. Do you like Ariel? Look, yeah, mommy, I want this plate. And I, you know, <laughs> I sold boxes of them that night. That has always been my principle. Don't sell, you share. That's right. I t- and, and obviously you're passionate about it also. Your passion comes through so strongly, Kimberly. And people want to be around people who are passionate and they want to and they want to have some way. How can I have part of what you have, Kimberly? I want that. I want that feeling that you have. Yes. And that's what people say. And I tell them, say, okay, we got to start with this consultation because I need to know your why. I need to know about you. I need to know what you love. Well, I don't know. How do you figure that out? I say, that's the magic. That is the magic. (laughs) Because when a person has so much passion and energy, you know, we know I, I am not a scientist. I'm not a science person, but I do know that energy can never be created, no destroyed. It can merely be transfer from one thing to the next and so you come to me and I transfer this positive energy that I have this passion because it's in you we just got to wake it up that's all it is we have this conversation so we can wake up what is already in you because your passion and your purpose you were already born with that you just got to wake it up Man, I feel woken up right now. I'm so glad I had this conversation with you this afternoon. I was feeling tired. I don't feel tired anymore. I feel woken up. All Woo! right. Yes. That's And you know, and that's how I am. I will be so tired. And as soon as it's lights, camera, action, it wakes it up. And it's like, okay, let's go. Let's talk about it. Because <laughs> I get to talk about something that I love and that I'm passionate about. And it just makes me feel good. And I like sharing it with other people because it makes them feel good too. Yeah. Yeah. I feel good. I'll bet the listeners right now are feeling good too. And if they're not, you need to rewind this and just listen to Kimberly a little bit more because she just, she is on fire. Um, so you meant, I, I mentioned in the bio, your bio, that you really have a passion for helping budding and novice entrepreneurs. What is it about the newer entrepreneurs that gets you so excited, that gets you so passionate? Because I am there at conception. That's how I look Mm. at it. I am there at conception. So you're coming to me because you want to birth something, but you're not Mm -hmm. sure, or you're in that early phase, you know, and Mm -hmm. They, they have more of that passion and that drive that I like, that mm-hmm. is there. You know, they, they, they're right there on the cusp of something great. And so to be mm-hmm. able to watch it just fully go, like it's literally like having a baby. So I get to watch from 
when you're not showing to when you're in full bloom. And then <laughs> when you launch this business, you launch this event, you publish this book, and you have now birthed that baby. And I get to sit back and watch the clients look at what we have created together. And they have that look of, of the proud father and the doting mom. And I'm standing back like the proud auntie, like, now that's my baby. I didn't give birth, but I helped raise it. That's my baby. And so that is why, just because they have that, they have that, that energy and that drive that I really love. And that's not saying people that have been in business for 10 years don't have. It's not at all saying that. <laughs> It's just that right. I know, you know, everybody has a niche. And for me, I've always worked with people who are aspiring or just got started. Like they bought the LLC, now what? They don't, like what do I do <laughs> now? They have an idea and it's like, okay, now what? And so I like that because it also challenges me because I, I like thinking of new ways to turn your idea, your passion into something that helps you make money. And it's it's just, it's fun. So much fun. It's hard work, listeners. It's hard work. <laughs> but it's it is fun. hard work. But it's so yeah. much fun. And I enjoy it. You know, I, I love being exhausted at the end of the night because I've been helping so many people because I literally, my the gears in my brain are always turning and I'm always mm -hmm. thinking of, I reflect. Okay, so I had this conversation today with this client and this is what we decided. I think they're gonna do good. And in that moment, I might take them and be like, you're a rock star, you're on that cusp of you know, that greatness, keep going, you know, that kind of thing. It, I don't know, it's such a drive for me. It sounds like you're really good at being able to in, really listen and then intuitively help them see their greatness and how they can really become successful. Yes, I, I, I like to think that I am and they are trusting me with that. So, so far I have been doing good. And it's really, I just would say because it's, I'm such an idea person, you know, that's mm -hmm. what I've always said. I'm an idea person and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how ridiculous you may think your idea is, you know, mm -hmm. we can turn that into a business and that's what I tell them. And so there, there's a confidence booster in that, knowing that you can come to me, aside from anything illegal, you can come to me with any, I have to put that disclaimer out there, you can come to me with any idea and uh -huh. I can help you turn it into a business. And they, you know, it's so fun because even when I do these interviews, most of the time people want to challenge me and throw an idea out there. I think by far, mm -hmm. probably the funniest one, someone asked me, say, okay, well, what if I love throwing a tennis ball against the wall? I was like, mm -hmm. okay. All right. So that's a type of therapy. So you sitting there, you're talking about, you can like to throw the tennis ball like that right there. I say that in itself is therapy for people. I was like, so we can turn this into, you know, um, kids with special needs. Like maybe you develop a, a special type of tennis ball that gives the right um, pressure points for the fingertips in a particular place. That constant motion right there, you're helping people to build their range. Like, let's go. I want to knit. Okay. So you want to knit? Let's find a niche in there. Premies. You got micro premies, super premies. Like those kids don't have clothes that fit them. Maybe that's your niche right there. You're going to knit booties and little hats for all of the little uh -huh. kids that are in the NICU because their parents want to dress them up in something cute. It's like, there's nothing you can come to me with that is legal mm -hmm. and we can't make it work. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That you are so inspiring. So when somebody comes to you and they have this consultation with you and they tell you um, their big why and what they're passionate about and you've, you give them great ideas and you've come up with something that's really going to, uh, that you know is really going to work for them. And then have you ever had them not move forward? And how did you help them? Why, why did they not move forward? And how did you help them overcome whatever was holding them back? So I have um, grown to accept the fact 
that everyone is not ready to move just because their feet work. And, <laughs> and, and, there, and, and that's power in that. So most of the time when you have the consultation, you'll tell me your idea. I will tell you how I believe I can help you do it. The timeline of minimum time that I think we're going to need together and move forward. Very, I'm trying to think, who have I had the conversation with? I probably only have a couple of conversations with people who have not moved forward. And it's been for a couple of different reasons. That's amazing. Um, because you have to already have a certain level of accountability to get into that. You know, I don't do the coffee break, the, you know, the pick your brain, you have to get on my schedule. So the fact that I'm making you use a link to get on my calendar to have that conversation with me, that we some of that out there. Now, how many people are in my inbox telling me that they want to start a business? Can I help them? Now that list yeah. is long, but the people <laughs> who actually schedule the consultation um, and we have that conversation, that's been, that's been very few people. Um, and I okay. think that attributes to my passion about what I'm doing, that they uh -huh. really have that confidence in me. The people that haven't moved forward, um, it's a couple of things. Some people just don't believe in investing in their business. You know. Ding, ding. I hear you on that. What is that all about? They think they can do it with no money. No, right. you, I don't know of any business you can start with no money. Right. Well, you might be able to start it, but I don't know how you can make a profit in it with no money. You're never going to make any money. You can just say, I've started a business and then right. it never goes anywhere. Yeah. You're right about that. Right. But and, to and actually so, make an income. Right. A profit. And so that, that happens in that, you know, and, and I'll see that person still around, um, basically just anywhere that um, the person can get a free consultation that's where yes. they jump but you're never getting you're never getting the meat all you're getting is that little appetizer that little cut with the toothpick in it you know that's <laughs> never going to satisfy you that's what you're getting if you want mm -hmm. the meat and potatoes you have to order an mm -hmm. entree you have to mm -hmm. order an entree. So I have, you have that. And there are just people who don't want to invest in their business. Then you have other people who are just not ready mentally, you know, because mm -hmm. it's a big change. And you see that with anything, um, with trauma, you know, people have, they, they're scared to make these big changes because it changes your identity. And mm. everyone isn't ready for that. I always follow up with people um, a couple of times after we have the consultation. Normally after one follow-up, the person go ahead and signs up. After you know the second or third, if they don't, then that's okay too. They're still on my mailing list. They still get information, you know, and if and when they decide that they are ready for an entree and they're tired of that little sampler cup then, you know, we're <laughs> able to get started because I'm pretty good at remembering the conversations that I have with people and what their business practices are and what they want to do. So it's good to be able to pick up, but you know, that that's the way it is in business. Honestly, if everyone signed up to work with me, I would be a little afraid. It's like, I'm doing something <laughs> wrong. If Every, you no, know, you'd have to raise your rates until yes, they stop, would be, until everybody would stops be signing up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because like everyone shouldn't, everyone should not be signing up. That's right. So the rate that the conversion rate that I'm at right now, I'm very happy with it um, because the clients that I'm working with, they are really moving forward. And I'm so excited about all the things that they're doing. You know, you'll see me on, if you follow me on social media, you'll see me sharing things that my clients are doing. They have a book coming out. I want to tell you about their book, an event, whatever they're doing. I'm the first person to share it from their mm -hmm. page. When they post, I'm right there hitting share because mm -hmm. I, I'm always the proud aunt, always the proud mm -hmm. aunt. Yeah. So when you're working with these people, 
um, these budding and novice entrepreneurs that have their big why, they've had their consultation, they're like, yes, I'm all in, let's get going. And they start, what are the biggest challenges that uh, they run into? And how do you solve it? You can just choose one or two if you want to. I was about to say, how long <laughs> is this show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was like. Well, maybe just pick one because we don't have all day. <laughs> I would say quieting the white noise. That's the biggest thing. Quieting the white noise. Everybody. And what's the white family? noise? So what now? What's the white noise? The, the family and friends that don't see the vision that are, uh, I don't think that that's going to work. Are you sure you mm -hmm. want to have that event there? You know, and they're taking in, and I call it white noise because that's what it's like. When TV used to cut off, and my kids don't believe that, like TV used to cut <laughs> off and you could have, you know, the American flag and music would play for a while. And then after a while, shh. You get all the little, yep, yep. The little white noise going <laughs> type thing. And that's what it is because it's not helpful. It's just holding a place in your head. It's just keeping up space because you're allowing them to, um, to make you second guess what it is that you want. And that's the whole purpose of hiring someone like me, a business coach and strategist is because I'm that sounding board. You know, you want to take advice from an expert, you know, if you're getting ready to have surgery, you know, you want the doctor to be the most experienced person in the room, the surgeon, you know, you, you shouldn't be listening to, you know, your aunt Kathy telling you, you know, where, I, well, I don't think you need to use a scaffold. No, I think I'm gonna go with the expert <laughs> on this one, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. But that's the biggest or thing. Why, why do you need to pay her? You right. know all this already. You can get on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Please and these are people YouTube. who have never run a business, who know right. nothing about what is going on, but they've got a lot of opinions about it. Right. And, you know, and, I, and I'm telling them all the time, I was like, listen, there's a reason why when you go to the eye doctor, they give you a prescription that is for you because everyone cannot see your vision. I was like, I may not be able to see the full big picture of what you want, but that it is my job to make sure that whatever it is you are painting, you have the right brush and the right type of paint for what you are doing. If you need acrylic, I'm not handing you finger paint because that's, that's not necessary. So getting them to really trust themselves because I think that that's where it comes into comes into a lack of trust and you see that a lot with novice and budding because many of them are the first in their family to start a business so of course they don't have this role model in their family that they trust to model themselves behind you know and the family doesn't always understand it my family does not understand it my mom she she doesn't understand why I'm important to some people, which is funny <laughs> to me, but she, she, just does, she doesn't get it. Like I I'll tell her stuff. My family doesn't, doesn't either. Right. But we have, but we're in that place where we've learned how to quiet out the white noise, yes. you know? And yes. so I help them get to that point when I can get them to the point of just like just silencing everyone, just let them say what they're going to say. And you just keep moving because that's what I do. I told my mom, I was starting to be, what you starting a business? What is that? People pay for that? <laughs> I think my mom and your mom are the same person. I heard it, that too. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, and I tell her things and she'll be like, oh, I will tell you, I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm feeling so great about this last book collaboration I was just a part of. So um, The Power of Why has become a series. Book two came out um, this month in December. My mom told me, maybe it was Saturday, that she read my chapter and she liked it. And I was like, oh, look at me. Look at me. I mean, I've only been in, in several books and things, but she read this chapter yeah. and she liked yeah. it. And I was like, I'm doing it. My mom yeah, read the yeah, chapter yeah. and she liked it. But, you know, anytime I get things like that, I love it. 
and it makes me mm-hmm. feel good. But when they don't understand mm-hmm. it, it doesn't stop me from moving forward. And that's yeah. how I have to get my clients to be. Like, don't let that yeah. stop you from moving forward. Because I promise yeah. you that once you start, get this business going and it's successful, they're going to tell everybody they know <laughs> that you have a business. And that they know you personally and very well. Yes. Oh, I, oh, I'm friends. That's my niece. That's my niece right there. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's my uh-huh. daughter. They they will all be very proud. It's just the process they don't understand. And you know, and it might take a really long time. That's it's the other like thing. labor. It's like labor. It's it's really messy <laughs> and, and kind of yucky at times. It, it can be very intense. And it can take a moment, you know, but at the uh-huh. end, when you get to that birthing process, when it's, when it's the baby's finally here, everybody's uh-huh. proud of you. Yeah. Um, I have had uh, an online business since 2001. Oh, you know how long that's been. That's <laughs> back during the years. days of dialogue with yes. AOL. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> And my mom said all that stuff to me that your mom said. And then along the way, you know, she would be like, how much are you making? And I would tell her and she goes, there's no way you're making that. Nobody would pay you that. Just like your mom said. And then, um, you know, my the whole family, they're like, they don't have a clue what I do. And they really don't ask me about it or anything. And then two years ago, I had an article come out in Forbes and the phone rang off the hook from my family going, I didn't know you had a real business. (laughs) Are we related? (laughs) And I said, what do you think I've been doing all this time? (laughs) So when your article came out, did they say, I didn't know you had a real business? (laughs) Yes. And so, uh, and what's so funny is all of the publications and things, for me, I think my favorite one was, you know, the little mention that I got in Write On Magazine because I grew up reading Write On Magazine and me, that was mm-hmm. big. But the local mm-hmm. newspaper where I'm from printed a story about me becoming an international bestseller. And the newspaper didn't tell me, so I didn't know. And everybody saw the, ad, saw the article and was, you know, I know her, you know, <laughs> I know her. <laughs> Uh-huh, my dad and his uh-huh. wife oh I, we know her that's that's my daughter <laughs> you know but listen but even in all of that my mom still was not impressed <laughs> she said well what are they writing about you for i said well because the book was an international bestseller oh uh-huh. okay <laughs> yeah well Yes, I do think we came from the same family, Kimberly. That is hilarious. So two things I want to do before we wrap up. One is I just want to tell you that um, I really see how you and Nicholas were like twins because you said he was an entertainer. And oh my goodness, Kimberly, you are an entertainer. You have made me laugh more during this podcast than I've ever laughed in any podcast I've done. That Thank is, you that, that means you are having fun with me and I love that. That's what it should be. The It should be a, a memorable experience. You know, I always make that joke. Um, people are like, you're something else. I'd be like, well, I hope I'm like, she's something else. I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I just love you. I think you're amazing. And I know All of our listeners are loving you too. So the final thing I want to do is have you tell everybody if they just can't wait to have more of you and they want to uh, get to know a little bit more about you and perhaps even schedule that consultation, how do they get in touch with you? So my website is the best place to find um, all the information on me. Social media links are there podcast, information about my coaching academy. And that website is www.kimberlylawson.net. Um, that's the best place to go. And I'm on social media, um, on everything, LinkedIn, Kimberly Lawson. You can find me um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Lawson Learning Academy is there. But if you go to the website, kimberlylawson.net, that connects you to everything and as well as my YouTube channel. 
Yeah. And I was on that website this afternoon before we talked and it is chock full of great stuff. Plus fabulous pictures of you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I just did. A, a, um, I have some new photos. I got them last night. I've been going through them. I can't wait to um, to put them out there. But thank you. I, I mean, honestly, I've had a great time talking to you. It's just really like sitting around, having a conversation, swapping war stories about whose family don't think they have a real business or not. It's been entertaining. I enjoyed it. And the listeners, I, you know, I say this on my podcast. I thank you so much because you could have been anywhere else and you decided to spend this time with me. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. And I'm grateful to you, Kimberly. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Thank you for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.